trackers, welcome back to another product review. Well, this one's going to be a little bit different, isn't it, Ash? It is. Yeah, it is. So we're going to be comparing ternary lithium versus lipo-4 lithium. So uh, phosphate lithium versus ternary lithium. Not many of you probably know that there is different types of lithium. There's also a lithium ion that's coming out, which is meant to be really good. But yeah, these are your two big players at the market at the moment. These are the two uh, big players that all power sell. So I thought I would do a side-by-side -side comparison and let you know what the difference is and what you're getting for your money. So let's get into it, I guess. We'll start by a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, into the side-by-side -side comparison. So looking at it, your big difference is obviously going to be the size. So I should go into what we've actually got here. Looking at it, I'm sure most of you would think that this one here, which is the LiPo 4, would be the bigger battery capacity. Is it, Ash? Ah, mm, oh, trick question. No. <laughs> no, it's not. That one's actually a smaller capacity versus this one's got the bigger one. So we'll run through all the specs. I'll get the computer out and we'll do a spec comparison. But yeah, as you can see, size difference. You're going to have to deal with a lot heavier and a lot bigger package if you go into a LiPo 4 than if you go into a ternary. Uh, that's why ternary batteries are generally used in your remote control cars, remote control planes, all that sort of rechargeable, smaller lithium batteries. They're all this style because they pack a really big punch in a small little lightweight cartridge. As far as what these guys have done, so you get a display on both. The information on the display is the same. I would say the display on this one's better because it's split is input and output. Versus on this one, it just sort of tells you here what's coming in but if you're then taking from that it'll just give you basically the average of what you're using rather than complete clear cut uh, as you can see they've given you covers dust covers or waterproof covers uh, well not waterproof water resistant covers on the 240 as well as all your power in is covered on this one and you can expand them and same with that's your expanding size. If you want to have a couple more, you can actually expand it to make a bigger battery pack. Uh, and you get on top is a wireless phone charger as well. So 15 watt output wireless charger. Uh, versus this one, your 240 is all exposed and your 12 volts exposed, which it is on this one as well. Your cigarette socket on both are, are covered. Uh, and both of them have the option to be able to turn the inverter off or DC DC off. Both of them are Bluetooth. Price wise, I think this one's about a hundred bucks difference generally with sort of size comparison. You save a hundred bucks by going into this. Uh, that's about sort of all, all I can point out. You do sort of get Lloyd brought up. This one has the grab handles, which makes it easier to tie down versus this bad boy. The grab handles are underneath, but it means you don't really have anything to secure it. So you'd be strapping over the actual unit both have fans, all that sort of stuff. Which one do you reckon looks better, Ash? That one. This the one? Big one. Yeah, I would agree. I reckon they've sort of made the LiPo 4 look a lot nicer. And I am guess that's to do with sort of when people do a bit of research on ternary batteries. Once, once I give you the specs, you'll sort of understand why I reckon they've got these as an option. But it's not their main energy focus that they're pushing on. So let's go into the stats. Hey, into the stats. So... What's sort of funny, the disadvantages for this one is the advantages to this one. So I'll run through the advantages and disadvantages for one and the advantage and disadvantages for the others because if I sort of bring it across, they cross each other out. Okay, so we'll start with the all powers R 1500 watt, which is your LiPo 4. So it has superior long-lasting life, very stable phosphate compound, extremely safe. The disadvantages that it's low charging and low discharging, that you're gonna to have to get a bigger battery uh, for the basically bigger size for the battery capacity. You're also gonna to have to get a bigger battery to do the same size inverter. It's gonna weigh more, it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna cost you more money as well, and it doesn't work as well in colder climates. Onto the S2000 Pro. Now, there is an S2000 and S2000 Pro. This is the S2000 Pro, which gives you the bigger inverter. So into the advantages for this, higher charging and discharging efficiency, which is a lot bigger on this. It can do a lot, lot bigger charging, a lot bigger discharging. Works well in colder climates, 
lightweight, smaller capacity. Uh, you'll generally have a smaller battery in the same size unit and it's cheaper. The disadvantages, short cycle life, which it's still not that bad. You're still going to get, when I go into the cycle life, so it's still plenty of time. Uh, unstable cells. That's only without a BMS. The cells are fine as long as you have a BMS. Uh, and to let you know, this is basically ran in all your remote control cars and your little lithium AA batteries are also ternary. So if you're concerned about ternary batteries exploding, you have a lot more of them in your house that don't have a BMS. This one with a BMS, no problem. Uh, that's it for the disadvantages on that. Let's go into a side-by-side -side stat breakdown. Okay, so price. Now, remember, these aren't the same size batteries or the same size inverters, so the price doesn't really help, but it's sort of giving you the two smaller compact units. So for $999, you'll get the R1500. For $1,299, you get the S2000 Pro. You'll get 3,500 cycles out of this, which works out to 9.5 years at one cycle a day. You'll get 2,500 cycles out of this, which works out to 6.8 years at 1,000 cycles a day. So ample amount of time. Your capacity of battery, this is where it gets really interesting. You're on 1,152 watt hours or 9.6 amp, 96 amp hours versus your 1500 watt hours, 120 amp hours for this one. So as you can see, a lot smaller, a lot more battery. Then it gets even more interesting. Can only do 1800 watts through the inverter versus this one can do 2000 watts through the inverter. AC input, again, this is really interesting. 1600 watts versus 2500 watts we've had going to this through AC charging. Your solar, this one says 650 watts, this one says 500. That's bullshit. This one will always do more solar. When I've tested them with the blanket, I'm getting an extra 50 watts of solar into this bad boy than I am into this bad boy. So not only will it allow you to charge more, but it's also more efficient at getting the charge in. Uh, and then your weight, 14 kilos versus 16 kilos. So all in all, that's your stats what you really need to know about them. Which one do I think is better? Look, a lot of people are gonna get scared with the compound, ignore it. It's got a BMS. I honestly reckon the S series, yeah, it doesn't look as nice, but I think you just get so much more bang for your buck. The size is better, the lightweight, bigger inverter, charging faster. I reckon this is way better. And unfortunately, because of the sort of People out there going, oh shit, they're going to blow up. Not many people use ternary and were forced into LiPo 4s. I wish the market would go into this. This is way better for me. But either way, if you want to be nice and safe and go the phosphate, go your phosphate, it won't let you down either. I thought seeing as we've got it set up, I may as well talk about the all-power solar panel. So this is their 400 watt. They do a couple of different sizes. They also do a massive 600 watt, which if you've got the money, I'd recommend that. So with these units, solar is everything. You can now get a alternator charger through EcoFlow, I think it is, that'll charge these up. But if you have a massive solar, then you don't have to worry about it. Have this sitting out, or if you've got solar on the roof of your car, these will be charged in no time flat. They charge super fast through solar, as the way it actually works is it can accept the full voltage and it doesn't have to be reduced down to 12 volt to go into the battery. So I think this one's like 48 volts and the 48 volts is going directly in and charging at 48 volts. So highly recommend if you're looking at a portable power station that you get a solar panel because it's just the fastest way to charge them. It's really good, apart from AC charging is really fast. That'll basically wrap this video up. That's everything you guys need to know. So as always, like, comment, subscribe. I've got a discount code for any of All Power stuff as well as a couple other brands that are on there. So click on my link tree to see if you can save yourself some money. Until next time, see ya.